may not recognize them, but there's a new powerhouse emerging in college football. And in West Virginia, fans will tell you this is the strongest Mountaineer team ever. They are led by explosive quarterback Major Harris and a defense that has held off every opponent this year. Ranked number seven and undefeated, the Mountaineers are brimming with pride and confidence for the biggest game they've ever played. Penn State played West Virginia, they almost seemed destined to win. In fact, they've beaten the Mountaineers 30 of the last 32 times. But the Nittany Lions are suffering through an agonizing year, enduring injury and inexperience. They are frustrated, but they're not about to give anything away, especially to West Virginia. One of the great grudge matches is about to continue. Penn State battles undefeated West Virginia today on CBS. Virginia. They believe in God, country, family, and Mountaineer football. And today, not necessarily in that order. This is the big one. Come on across the Star City Bridge and on up the hill. If you're lucky, you hold one of the 65,079 tickets for West Virginia football. This is the happening in this state. The student body began arriving here some three hours ago. They will break the all-time attendance record for this confrontation between West Virginia and their arch rival, Penn State. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brent Musburger. Indeed, it is a happening in this state. I'll tell you, nothing bonds the state of West Virginia quite like Mountaineer football, and never in the history of this school have they began a season 8-0, and yet they can do it. They're 7-0 right now. They're ranked number seven. Yes, they've got a chance to win a national championship. They may get to the Orange Bowl, take on Oklahoma, Nebraska. They may get to the Fiesta Bowl, take on Notre Dame. They don't care, just as long as they get there. Now, some of you may have a stereo. Type. You know a feeling about a West Virginia football fan? Well, it ain't necessarily so. Take a listen to offensive lineman Kevin Coken. You come here on a Saturday, and I guarantee everybody in the stadium is going to have shoes on, and they're all going to be able to talk, and, and none of them are going to be limping, as everybody says they will. It's um, it's really special. The people in West Virginia are really special. They're, you know, in all the places that I've traveled to and everything, they're the friendliest people, and they're, you know, the, the warmest and the, the most understanding. They want us to be good as much as we want the state to be good. And as far as we can tell, everybody in the band is indeed wearing shoes. All right, Pat Hayden. So we've got West Virginia against their arch rival, Penn State. Through the years, Penn State has just beaten them like a drum. But let's start with this West Virginia team. Folks don't know them. How good are they? Well, they're ranked number seventh, and they're a very, very special team. This year's Cinderella team, if you will. And I think they're special because they're very well coached by Don Nealon. And secondly, as trite as it sounds, these guys really care about one another. They played next to each other for four years or so. And also, I think the biggest reason is their sensational quarterback, Major Harris. This guy has a big time arm, can throw the ball downfield with great accuracy, can run the option play, and Brent, most importantly, his teammates love to play for him. He is a major talent. But nobody in this state is overconfident. Through the years, Joe Paterno has won 21 of the 22 games he has coached against West Virginia. Yet the Nittany Lions are down right now. They are struggling and primarily on offense. We saw him last week against Alabama. 0 for 14 on third down. That is remarkable. What offense starts with line play. They are led by Steve Wisniewski, the offensive guard who's the All-American. And this is ordinarily a strength of Penn State, that offensive line. And today, they have to find a way to create some creases for that running game and protect the freshman quarterback, Tony Sackett. You know, for years, Penn State has dominated Eastern football. But last year, it was Syracuse. This year, it could be West Virginia, the new beast of the East. Let's check in now with Jim Nance and Eric Parsegan. Eric? 
All right, thank you very much, Brent. I'd like to extend a welcome back to the studio, to the coach. Welcome back. Thank you very much, Jim. I'm delighted to be back, particularly with so many great college games to be played in the next five weeks. And bowls to be decided. We'll talk about that at halftime. But right now, here's what's happening. Notre Dame, second ranked in the country, leading Navy, nine minutes left. But the middies are driving. They're at the 39-yard line of the Fighting Irish. LSU and Mississippi. Ole Miss has just scored minutes ago to cut that 10-point deficit down to three. Now, in the second quarter, Tommy Hudson trailing 7-3. Fired across the middle to Eddie Fuller, 39-yard touchdown. That's put him up at that point 10-7, but it's now a three-point lead, 17-14 in the third quarter. Bobby McAllister has just taken it in from a yard out. Michigan State leads Ohio State by 10 in the third. Okay, Coach, your thoughts now on Penn State and West Virginia with Penn State, a big underdog today. Yeah, well, they are. The... Um Mountaineers are heavy favorites, no question about it, in this ball game. But if I was a West Virginia fan, I'd be doggone nervous. They've gone against Joe Paterno 22 times and have won once. And the, and the schedule that they've played has been a bit suspect. Of the seven opponents that they played against, they only show 18 wins. So don't count Joe Paterno's team out of this. This is going to be closer than a lot of people think. All right, there you have it. Coach and I will be back here at halftime, of course, scores and highlights. But right now, we're getting set for the Nittany Lions and the Mountaineers. We'll rejoin Brett and Pat down in Morgantown after this message and a word from your local station. The glorious mountains of West Virginia. What a slice of Americana. And everybody in the state now either crammed inside this beautiful little arena or watching somewhere on television as their beloved Mountaineers get ready to take on Joe Paterno and Penn State. Sports presents College Football. Live from Mountaineer Field in Morgantown, West Virginia, it's the Penn State Nittany Lions versus the West. Football, it is perfect here in Morgantown, West Virginia. And the Mountaineers are not messing around. They won the toss. They did not defer. They said, we'll take the ball. And Penn State will kick it off with Henry Atkins putting the ball on the tee at the 35-yard line. And Eugene Napoleon standing back there on his own goal line for West Virginia, number 33. Napoleon fumbles it, picks it up at the 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, out to the 43. Eddie Johnson finally brings him down after a 38-yard return as that fumble momentarily fooled the kickoff team for Penn State. Major Harris now, the brilliant young quarterback for West Virginia. Craig Taylor and Anthony Brown will be the running backs. Calvin Phillips and Reggie Rimmer, the wide men, and Keith Wynn, they'll throw to the tight end. The strength of the offense could well be the offensive line as Harris brings them to the line. Down. Incomplete wanting win the tight end, but Harris. 
Harris overthrew him. Meet this offensive line. Kevin Koken. He's the center. The guards, Bob Kovac and John Stroya. The tackles, Brian Smiter and Rick Phillips. We're talking about 300, 270, 270, 270, 270. That's their weights. Second and 10 for Harris and the Mountaineers. Rimbert, the man in motion. Harris, a great option runner. Keeps it, crosses midfield to the 45. First down at the Penn State 40-yard line before he is run out of bounds by Sherrod Range, number 36, a gain of 18. Prince, what makes this team so difficult to defend is they can run the option play led by the offensive line. They can throw the football downfield and they can run power. And they're not afraid to have Major Harris carry the ball in the option. Unlike most teams, they like him because he's a powerful back and break tackles. West Virginia with a first and 10 at the Nittany Lion 39. And the toss to Brown, 28 behind the left side. Rushes to the 31-yard line. Number 28, A.B. Brown. Dave's out the nose man for the Penn State defense. Rich Schoenwolf and Frank Giannetti alongside him. Andre Collins and Scott Gobb. The linebackers at linebacker U and Quintus McDonald and Keith Karpensky. Eddie Johnson is down and injured. Number 39 for Penn State. He's one of their safety men. Now down, was shaken up on the play. And they need Eddie Johnson today. He played superbly last week against Alabama. A converted cornerback who's just beginning to feel comfortable at free safety. Here he is making a tackle. He was also the one who made the saving tackle on the kickoff routine by Napoleon. Had a big game a week ago, and they need his physical play at free safety. player of the game on defense last week for Penn State. Paterno stalking the sideline. Chris Cesar, number 48, checks in. And he hasn't been out there for one play, and he's already bleeding a little bit, probably from the kickoff. Well, tell he you. came downfield on the special teams. Major Harris out brings West Virginia to the line. Second and short. Taylor is the power back, number 20. Browns right behind Taylor for another West Virginia first down near the 25. And what we've seen West Virginia do on this first drive, which gives you a, a, a chance to see why they're so difficult to defend as we watch this offensive line come off the line of scrimmage. Again, terrific surge by Kovac, the guard, Koch in the center, but we've seen them run power football. They threw the ball on first down, and they've also, also run the option play. Three different types of offenses. Grantis Bell and Calvin Phillips, the wide receivers, on this first and 10 on a busted play, freelances it, 20, 15, cuts five, touchdown West Virginia! The magician did it! Attempt the extra point with Chuck Levinas holding. Perfect. You know, Brent, I'd like to give some credit to some offensive linemen and blocks, but there really weren't any on that one. This was all Major Harris. He was supposed to go to his left, but there is no substitute for athletic ability, and he's got an awful lot of it. Made three guys miss, and you see why the coaches like to see him carry the ball. 7-0 Mountaineers. We'll be right back. How much does this game mean to West Virginia? Here's what Major Harris told us. Well, I think it means a lot to our program because I think, you know, this is going to be in front of the whole nation. And I think, you know, a lot of people want to know what we got. And I think if we can go out there and beat Penn State, I think we can show the country that we got a pretty good team down in Morgantown. 
a 27-yard touchdown run from the second-year quarterback out of the Pittsburgh area. 6'1", 207 pounds. He grew up a basketball player, but his high school coach saw him as a point guard and said, if he can bring that to my football team, I'll have a great high school football team. And now Major Harris looming as a big-time star here in West Virginia. Brad Carroll, number 19, will kick it off. Gary Brown and O.J. McDuffie, the two deep men. Offense, the freshman, 19, Tony Sackett quarterback. His running backs, John Green and Gary Brown, the wide men, and they hope to get the ball in Michael Timpson's hands today. David Jacob, the starting tight end. Roger Duffy's the center. Monahan, Wisniewski, the guards. Jonathan Brubaker, the starting tackles. They split the running backs. Saka on first down to Gary Brown. Brown is stacked up by the middle of that Mountaineer defense. The defense for West Virginia. Ray is in the middle. Chris Parker and Mike Fox alongside him. Chris Herring, the leading tackler. Theron Ellis and the outside men. Ronaldo Turnbull. Keep an eye on him. And Robert Pickett. Now Sean Redman in at fullback as you see the defensive backfield of the Mountaineers. Second and to the 36-yard line before Chris Parker, 94, brings him down. Chris Brown right here is going to make a real nice play inside. He's a guy who's 6'5", 280. Look how he uses his hands. Gets great leverage, gets underneath the shoulder pads of the offensive lineman, and makes a stop. Now a slot formation for Paterno on third and long. Just to the left side. This is Brown, turns it up. 40, 45, first down for Penn State. And does that break the schneid they've been on? Penn State was unable to convert one single third down into a first down against Will Curry's Alabama defense a week ago. Here, they hit their first one. First and 10, all at the 45 yard. Saka. Redmond is 22 in front of Brown. Saka to throw. Far side over through the intended receiver and out of bounds that time as Terry Smith, number eight, was the wide man. You know, Brent, one of the reasons they didn't move the ball on third down was because they did got terrible field position last week. Look what happened to them in the second half in particular, never crossing the 50-yard line. Some of that was very good defense by Alabama, but they couldn't generate anything on first down. Second and 10 for Penn State. Timpson into the game. He split out wide. World-class speed, number five. They pitch it, Brown bobbles it on the carpet. West Virginia recovers. Lawrence Drumgool, number 25, recovers the fumble. It was a very good pitch. Then he got tripped, and then the ball came loose. Drum Gruel made the recovery. He's the man who initially made the penetration that Brown saw. Against Paterno, West Virginia with a first and 10 at the Penn State 43 yard line. Off a of play fake, first down pass, plenty of time. Complete at the 35, win the tight end for a first down with Andre Collins and Keith Karpinski riding him out of bounds. Same play they opened up the game with. They clear out the left side with a wide receiver, and the tight end just runs a crossing route. And this team is very capable. 
capable of explosions. Looks how many points they have scored against some of the opposition. Boston College a week ago. The ball is just inside the Penn State 32-yard line. Another first down. This time they run Brown on the delay. Swinging to the outside. Run out of bounds at the 25 by Andre Collins. Number 31. Collins the leading tackler on this Penn State team. And he has his hands full today with A.B. Brown, number 28. And Anthony Brown is a guy that like to get the ball to early in the ball game. He's got real big legs and big hamstrings, and he takes a long time to loosen up. So when they start the game, they want to get as much out of they can from Anthony Brown as they can early, so they give him a lot of carries. Lamont and Bell are the wide receivers. Brown up the middle, close to a first down, but stopped short of it as Mark D'Onofrio, number 38, out of North Bergen, New Jersey, brings him down for the Nittany Lions. It'll be third and short. The options for West Virginia here. Well, they've run the option play. We've seen them also run power plays. In this circumstance, this year, they've been very effective with that senior offensive line coming off hard and running off tackle. And they love in third and short to put Harris in the option. They bring him down the line. He's jammed up, turned around, and slammed down at the 30 by Giannetti, number 85. Giannetti does a real nice job from the backside of the formation, staying at home and running down the line of scrimmage. Remember earlier, Major Harris on a broken play scored on the option play. This time he thinks he's going to do it again, but Giannetti stays at home and makes the play. Charlie Bauman to attempt a 44-yard field goal. That's about his maximum range, although Coach Don Nealon says he should be able to hit a 50-yarder. But coaches always say that about field goal specialists. Timeout call by the officials momentarily while they change balls. Now they've got it straightened out. And now they don't. And again, if you're thinking Penn State, Brent, Rich Schoenwolf, number 75, inside has blocked a couple this year, tipped a bunch of passes. He's a tall guy. You want to give a chance inside to try to block one. its way far enough no good no good Bauman misses a 44 yarder but West Virginia still leads Penn State seven to nothing This is Jim Nance in New York, a touchdown for the LSU Tigers, second touchdown pass of the day for Tommy Hodson. Hodson to Tony Moss, and the lead grows to 10 inside of three minutes in the third quarter, and the Kansas Jayhawks winless on the season, staying right with Oklahoma in the first quarter. Let's go back to Brent. For Oklahoma, but LSU with a big one next week in Tuscaloosa against Alabama. That will play a major role in determining the winner of the Southeastern Conference. And here, West Virginia leads Penn State 7-0. While you're away, Joe Paterno brought Tony Saka and the entire offense over for a meeting. A tight formation. Saka back, has time, and he throws incomplete to Terry Smith. A jarring hit down there defensively for the Mountaineers with Mays getting over number three. Because Penn State had so many sacks last week, they gave up five their maximum maximum protection here for tony saka but that means only two receivers go out as you watch terry smith take the hit from the free safety they're keeping everybody in and only sending two receivers out now mays sets up defensively on second and ten running back split for the nittany lines saka waits the snap this is Brown swinging to the right, no daylight, and he made the most of it with Ronaldo Turnbull and Theron Ellis, two of their tough defensive players, all over him. Very much a drought here at Penn State, as you can see, and really the problem the last two weeks that we have seen them, again, they're facing a third and long. First down has been their real problem. They're not gaining four, five, six yards on first down. They end up a lot in third and eight. Dave Daniels coming wide to the left, third and seven. Saka with time, throws incomplete. He wanted Daniels at the 45, and Penn State forced a punt. Doug Helkowski, a busy punter a week ago against 
against Alabama. Francis Bell, number one, wide receiver out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The West Virginia roster sprinkled with Florida speed. Belkowski booms it and Bell with a fair catch at the 24-yard line where it'll be first and 10. Let's talk about a possible national championship. Let's look at the top 10. UCLA rolling in the Pac-10. Notre Dame unbeaten. SC is there. Miami not out of it, nor is Nebraska, even though both schools have been beaten once. Now the controversy. Florida State and West Virginia. One voter left Florida State off his ballot a couple of weeks ago. Florida State came back hard with a mail campaign. Now West Virginia drops to seven, and the two schools have got a bitter rivalry going in the polls right now. First and 10 for Major Harris. Taylor and Brown are his running backs. Running the option, now a late pitch to Brown, and he is out of bounds at the 29 with Keith Karpinski, 84, riding him out. Returning for Penn State, number 39, Eddie Johnson, to that defensive backfield, and they need him. And he has been a sensational player this year. Had some trouble making the move from corner to free safety, and in college football, you need a guy who plays free safety very aggressively. Eddie Johnson can do that for the Lions. Second down for the Mountaineers. All on their own, 28. Harris pitches to Brown, a hole, 35, first down, and down at the 38-yard line, and that was Eddie Johnson bringing him down. You know, Brent, this offense reminds you a little bit of Nebraska because they run power football, they throw the football downfield, and then they run the option. And they get speed on the corner. Anthony Brown has flat-out speed and can break tackles. A.B. giving the Mountaineers another first and ten. Major Harris. Now pursued heavily by that Nittany Lion defense and only his strength allowed him to get it off. Rich Schoenwolf, number 75, managed to penetrate along with Keith Goganich, number 42. Both of them were all over the Major. And that's a nice play here by Schoenwolf, who played very well a week ago as well. He fights off the black, he stays low again, gets into the shoulder pad so he can get some leverage, and then just makes Major Harris stop first, and then he makes almost a sack. Harris does a nice job of getting rid of the ball and avoiding a 10-yard loss. Second and 10 for the Mountaineers. Draw play with Brown, 40, breaks free to the 45 and close to a first down before Andre Collins out of Cinnamonson, New Jersey, hauls him down. One of the differences between Major Harris and Tony Saka, both young quarterbacks, but Major Harris has been able to grow up around a very good offensive line the last year and a half. The strength of this offensive team, Saka playing with an inexperienced offensive line. Third and three. They send Brown out as a receiver. Harris keeps it. Quarterback for the first and ten. Nice play. That play is supposed to design, is designed to go outside. But he sees there's nothing there. He sees quick upfield penetration, great eyes, great vision. Sometimes quarterbacks don't have great vision running the football, but Major Harris does. Sees the penetration upfield, turns inside, and picks up the first down. We've mentioned number 31, Andre Collins from New Jersey, one of 19 children. What a tribute to his family. Ten of the first 11 are college graduates. And now Collins trying to do it at Penn State. Harris on the option, pitch to Brown, and he is down to the 46. Eddie Johnson, number 39. And against this option-style attack, the safeties will be busy making tackles. But what they like to do is stretch the defense out with that option, make you defend all 53 yards in width, and then let's hammer the ball up inside on you. And then they'll throw the ball deep, maybe five or six times today. You'll see them throw deep passes, hoping either for the catch or pass interference. Jamie Lamont checks in a wide receiver on the second and five. The Major's back again. He's got time. Wants to go downfield over the middle, incomplete. And his receiver, Lamont, was very well covered that time. Karpinski had dropped back into that passing zone. 
who are looking at the fourth best offense in the country this year. You can see how many points they are scoring per game. And again, we've talked about what makes them so difficult to defend is they have a lot of different weapons. They can go up top for the big pass play, can run the option, and they can power it right through you on short yardage. Third down. Three wide receivers. Taylor, the lone running back. He keeps him in the block. First down on the far sideline. Karpinski running the wide man, Keith Wynn, out of bounds. So they line up three wides to the right, come back to the tight end on the far side for a first down. And Keith Wynn used to be a split end here at West Virginia. A couple years ago, he made the move inside, gained 45 pounds, and has really come on as a blocker. Always been a good receiver, but really come on the last year and a half as a blocker, and you need that when you run the option play, a blocker and tight end. West Virginia leading Penn State 7 to nothing, and a first down for the Mountaineers at the Nittany Lions 35. our first penalty of the afternoon. Looked like the right tackle, Brent, moved a little bit early to me, Brian Smiter. Watch the right tackle, number 79, Smiter. That happens. See, all the defensive players are rushing up for the blitz, and he sensed that and left just a little bit early. Offense, first down. First and 15, West Virginia must get to the Penn State 25 for a first down. Taylor in front of Brown. And Harris on an option freeze, goes long, Lindbergh, touchdown West Virginia.
good first down run before Theron Ellis brings him down. Downstairs to John Docker. John, have you found John Denver yet? Uh, I haven't found him yet, Brent, but I'll tell you someone I did find, and it, you have to wonder how the Penn State offense would be if Blair Thomas hadn't hurt his knee well. I talked to him this morning. As a matter of fact, I woke him up, and he, I asked him about the knee, and he said it's about 80 to 90 percent. He definitely won't be back this year, but he's certainly working on it, and he has two options, Brent. He has the option of A, going pro in the spring and getting ready for the NFL draft, or B, taking a red shirt and coming back next year at Penn State. He hasn't focused yet, but he kept saying to me, you know, graduation is very important to me, and the earliest I can do that is this summer. Now back to you, Brent. All right, John. The center tried a quick hike on that play. It's a third down for Penn State. You look behind Redmond and Brown, the West Virginia cheerleaders. Hoopman and Hollerin here in Morgantown. And Saka had good time, throws underneath to Redmond. He battles his way for a first down. First down for Penn State with Al Vold Mays, number three, bringing him down. And that is an important first down for Penn State at this game. If they're going to stay in this game and not have it be a blowout, they need to grind out some first downs and keep the ball away from Major Harris. Also, it emphasizes the really the loss of Blair Thomas. John Dockery was talking about that. He's the guy that came up with all their big plays a year ago, and they missed the big plays from Blair Thomas. Now with a first and ten for Penn State. to hit him. You mentioned Chris Herring. He is one of those guys on the inside, number 49, right there, who's got great instincts. And I think it comes from being from a football family. His father is a coach. His uncle is a coach, in the, was a coach in the USFL. He just has a real feel for the game like a middle linebacker needs. Second down and long for Penn State. is it? Joe Paterno's got his coat off now. And it looked like the center, Roger Duffy, when he stepped back with the right guard, stepped on Tony Saka's foot, and that's why he fell down. But nice concentration by Brown to pick up the little fumble and then pick up the first down. Penn State's deepest penetration. Down to the West Virginia 42. Off a fake draw. Saka now flushed out and hammered down by Ronaldo Turnbull, the leading sack man. a great pass rusher. He is 6'5". He gets very nice leverage by staying low and then presses his way right into the quarterback. Reaching out with those long arms of his. Scouted by an assistant basketball coach. Nicknamed the Condor. Second and long. Drop it off to the tight end over the middle and they get a first down as David Jacob got down to the 30-yard line before Darrell Whitmore brings him down for the Mountaineers. And I love that call. It is a fake screen to the right. Watch how the tight end, David Jacob, the bottom of the screen, he blocks here. Everybody fakes screen, and then he delays over the middle. Watch the linebackers react to the screen. Big hole in the middle. That's a nice call. Saka driving the Nittany Lions to the 31. Stacked up at the line. That was Steve Wisniewski. And Wisniewski carried the ball there. That was the old Nebraska fumble Ruski. The ball was on the ground. And Steve Wisniewski picked it up and tried to run it around right guard. What a name for the fumble Ruski. Wisniewski. Here it is. Watch the ball go on the ground. And then Wisniewski, the left guard, picks it up. And he thinks he's going to go untouched, but he was very much touched by three, three defenders. Theron Ellis led the way. Here's Brown. Cut back. Brown battling his way to the 26-yard line and out of bounds. Mike Fox, number 61, getting him out of bounds. 
yards. This will leave them with a third down. And football is a game of important plays at different points in the game. Right now, this third down is a very important play for Penn State. They're down by 14. They're driving. They need to keep that going and get on the scoreboard. An important play here for Penn State. third down, wants Timpson incomplete. Inside the five yard line, Timpson had pulled away from Drumgool, but the ball just out of his reach, and it'll be a fourth down for the Nittany Lions. And those kind of plays are the difference between wins and losses, because Timpson was wide open for a catch and a touchdown, and again, just overthrown by Saka. Ray Tarassi to attempt a 41 yard field goal. Lonigan to put it down at the 31. And it's stuffed by West Virginia. The Mountaineers block a field goal. That's Willie Edwards who is coming off with the ball, but inside they like to put Turnbull, the defensive linebacker who's 6'5 and can really jump. They like to put him right in the middle and let him do it. They're on Ellis, the 6-1 who gets way up, gets that right paw. It's a terrific leap by Ellis and well timed. Major Harris and that explosive West Virginia offense coming back with a first down at the 37. They lead Penn State by two touchdowns here in the opening quarter. Craig Taylor, the lone setback. Three wide receivers and Taylor goes nowhere as Goganis 42 is the first Nittany Lion to hit him. Well, Craig Taylor is a very good fullback for the Mountaineers. It's the toughest position to play for West Virginia because they have a primary block every play. No huddle play here by West Virginia. And the three wide receivers with just Taylor. Harris getting protection. Complete. Close to a first down with Karpinski wiping the receiver up right there. Let's check in with Jim Nance. Friends, some wild things happening in the Big 8. Two field goals by Jeff Jackie in Missouri leads with seven minutes before the half over Nebraska. Kansas threw for 140 yards in the first quarter, even up with Oklahoma starting the second. Let's go back to Brent. All right, they were going without a huddle and they were held up momentarily. The ball is at the 47-yard line. First and ten, they did a quick measurement. Wynn was the receiver that time. Now here comes Taylor. They hammer away across midfield and down to the 45. And Brent, the reason they're going without a huddle is they're trying to prevent substitutions by the Penn State defense. It's a good adjustment by Don Nealon and his staff. Now Harris barking the play at the line of scrimmage. He has Bell, Limbert, and Phillips as his wide men. They run Taylor on that draw play, and he may have gotten still another first down. And anytime Major Harris has the ball in his hands and threatens to get to the corner of the defense, as he did there, you have to react. Then he ran the little draw to Taylor inside. That is the 10th first down for West Virginia on minute six. No time for the situation substitutes. Harris back now. The offensive line gives him plenty of time. Drops it to Taylor, the running back, and he's to the 39 with Goganis, who has been very active, hammering him out of bounds along with Collins. Terrific protection. An offense, we said, starts with line play. Watch the time that Major Harris has here. Koken inside, Kovac, Stroya, all those guys inside give him plenty of time to find a receiver. Six yards to go for the first down. Still in the opening quarter. West Virginia leading 14-0. Harris runs out of trouble again. Now he throws. He was behind the line. It is wide receiver at the 27-yard line with a first down pass. And Willie Thomas making the stop. One of the things that Calvin Phillips does so well is adjust to the ball as, as West Virginia continues to go with their no huddle offense. This is a nice ploy by Don Neely, getting the, preventing the substitutions from coming in. Lamont slotted to the left. Taylor, and he is down at the 25-yard line. A short gain on first and 10 because Fran Gianetti, number 85, brought him down right there. 
Aaron Evans, the son of NBA referee Hugh Evans, checks in at fullback, number 36. He'll bodyguard for the major, who's flushed again by Schoenwolf. Look at his speed, get to the outside, throws up in the air, intercepted, and no, it was incomplete. They dropped the ball. Neil Hamilton had it. Neil Hamilton had the ball for the Nittany Lions and couldn't hold on. We've seen two plays. You're going to see the interception that Neil Hamilton should have had here. But the inside rush, I don't think you can rush a quarterback like Major Harris from the inside because he has so much scrambling ability. The ball goes off the helmet, and there number 30 Hamilton has it and then drops it. But to rush a quarterback like Harris, you have to rush from the outside, I think, Brent, to keep him in the pocket. Joe Paterno across the way, and a timeout has been called by West Virginia. How experienced is this line of West Virginia, Pat? Well, you look at the top 10 teams across the country. Look at all the starts that West Virginia has had. They go, these guys have played four years next to one another. And in no other part of the team do you need the kind of teamwork and cooperation that you need as you do in the offensive line. And these guys really care about each other. Every Thursday night, they go out to dinner together. They room together. It's a good group. Five seniors. Brian Smiter. Bob Kovac. Kevin Koken, John Stroya, Rick Phillips. Probably the most important part of a football team. Certainly John Madden among those who believe that you start with the offensive line. And Don Nealon knows he's got a good one. Every good team that I have been around has had leadership out of the offensive line. Koken and Stroya, two of offensive linemen, are co-captains of this Mountaineer team. Big third down for the Penn State defense. A.B. Brown back at tailback. Craig Taylor the fullback it is third and long the Mountaineers must get to the 16 for a first and 10 the ball is resting at the Penn State 25 Harris on the option has Brown on the outside Brown to the 20 first down to the 15 with Chris Caesar bringing him down as we come to the end of the first quarter here in Morgantown West Virginia Turn after this message and a word from your local station. Nice to have you with us. With Pat Hayden and John Dockery, I'm Brent Musburger. West Virginia is for real. 14 to nothing over Penn State. A summary of how we got there. Now he threw for 90 yards, but don't forget he also ran for 45, including a touchdown. They've rushed for 111, and Penn State only 21 rush. Now Penn State has also passed for 29 yards, so their total yards should be 50. It is 201 to 50. This is a first and 10 for the Major, who sends his fullback in motion, tosses to his tailback behind the fullback, and he slashes inside to the 12-yard line with Brian Chismar, number 28, who is slowed by an injury today and has not been very active, coming up to make that stop. And Don Nealon has got a team that's as impressive as any we have seen this year. And everybody thinks that this is Don Nealon's first good team. It is not. This is not an overnight success story. He has been in five bowl games his first eight years here at West Virginia. He's looking for his first major bowl this year. But he has the nemesis on the other side of the field. Unable to beat Joe Paterno. Thought he had it last year and it slipped away. They pound straight ahead and they're stuffed by the middle of that Penn State defense. So this will bring up a third and long. Penn State is very difficult to score on, particularly running the ball from the 15-yard line in. They play pretty much an eight-man front all over the field. You have much more success throwing the ball in than running against this defense. Fifth. Now the ball is at the Penn State 12-yard line, indicating how tough they are against the run. Anthony Brown goes wide to the right, and they put Bell in the backfield. They toss it to him, swinging around to the left. Now he's going to throw it, keeps it inside the 10, battles his way to the 7-yard line with a penalty marker down on the far side. So a bit of a wrinkle. A bell, a Francis Bell, they put him at tailback, gave him the option pass, brought him to the left, moved the regular tailback out to the right, but a penalty marker on the far side. 
it is against West Virginia a little too fancy that time and this penalty will hurt him. And very, very tough to get the ball in, in the end zone, running the ball up the gut. They had to try to come up with a, pick, a trick play as they did there or throwing the ball downfield or perhaps Major Harris on the option play. Joe Paterno watching as the options are explained. It'll be third and 12 as the ball is Offense. brought back to the 17-yard line. Well, Brent, you mentioned it at the top. It is absolutely astounding to me that Joe Paterno, in 38 years of coaching, has never had a losing season. That's remarkable to me. Rimbert and Phillips are the wide receivers. Wins the tight end. Harris pulls out of the option. He's hammered by Neil Hamilton, number 30, who comes in with a huge defensive play for the Nittany Lions. And Neil Hamilton was the one who should have had the interception a few plays ago, but that time makes a nice play off the corner. Very top of the screen on the right top. You'll see number 30. He was lined up as a linebacker. Harris had his back to him by the time he saw him. We actually never did see him, but Hamilton did a nice job, so Harris could, could not get rid of the ball. Now, there was a penalty marker thrown at the one-yard line on that play. And now what West Virginia has to be thinking is... Penalty marker was thrown because of illegal participation. 12 men on the field, defense. Oh, mercy. No wonder what tough. a mental blunder. Top of the screen, you're going to see some confusion there. Again, uncharacteristic of a Joe Paterno team. They both stayed in, and that's where the penalty was. No wonder they're so tough to score on down there. We got 12 guys in. That will tend to do it. <laughs> that is so uncharacteristic of a Joe Paterno coach team. Seldom in the past have the Nittany Lions beaten themselves. Now it is third and three. Wipes out that defensive play by Hamilton. Harris trying to cut back in, and they stop him short. Neil Hamilton again, number 30. He's out of Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, a senior, getting the job done, and they have forced West Virginia to go for the field goal. Again, once again, Neil Hamilton makes the play, playing outside linebacker. He's playing a lot more. He fights off the tight end's block. He's not just good on the open side. He can fight through the tight end and make the play on Harris as he did right there. Bauman to attempt a 24-yarder. He's got it long enough, and he's put West Virginia ahead by 17 points. 17, nothing. We'll be right back. Don Nealon played quarterback at Bowling Green, later became the head coach of his alma mater, then went up to join Bo Schimbeckler's staff at Ann Arbor before leaving Michigan to come here. Nine years at West Virginia, his record 65-35-1, and one, one fifth of his losses at West Virginia against Joe Paterno and Penn State, with Carroll set to kick it off again for the Mountaineers. Daniels and Brown again will be the deep men and Missouri ambushing Nebraska in the first half very early. Wyoming will be one of our feature teams next week against UTEP. Laramie, Wyoming. That'll be a great scene, won't it? comes onto the field. Let's get down to John Duff. 
Dockery. Doc? You know, Brent, this turf is some of the closest thing that I've ever seen to grass. It's very kind on the legs. Let me show you why. First of all, it has a really thick cushion underneath. And then the synthetic fiber here is not glued down, but rather tons of sand are poured between it, and it allows for give, kind of a little slide when a player cuts so his leg doesn't lock. But the biggest recommendation I've ever heard is saying that a coach in West Virginia, Don Nealon, likes to practice on this as much as on grass field. Now, that's something else. Now, back to you, Brent. Thanks, John. Two new running backs for Penn State. Sam Gash ahead of Thompson, number 44, and he slashes his way to the 37-yard line to make it second and short with Dale Jackson, 93, bringing him down. So Leroy Thompson out of Knoxville, Tennessee, with his first carry of the day. Number 11, Gash, is a story. He missed the Alabama game because of an ankle injury. They missed him, if for no other reason, blocking in that backfield. Now he is ahead of Thompson. Jacob goes to the right side. This is Thompson again, stops short of that first down. Scott Summits, 73 of Davidsville, Pennsylvania, leading the defense that time. Again, Summits, number 73, right here, is going to make a nice inside charge. What he does so well is get off on the snap. Watch how quickly he gets off, has a little slant inside, fights off the block of the guard, and then makes the play on Thompson. It's a very nice play by Scott Summits. Third and short for the Nittany Lions, needing to get a first to keep it going. Thompson behind Gash, stuffed, and leading the way, Chris Herring. If Joe Paterno looks like he's going to punt the ball here, but it surprises me you're, you're losing by 17 points. If you give the ball back to Major Harris, you, you have to worry about that. I'm surprised. I will try to, try to go for it here. And I don't think he has any option given this field position and the way the defense is stuffing his running game. I think Elkowski's got a punt. And watch Chris Herring as he makes the play right here. We talked about his instincts a little bit earlier. He's found a little soft spot, found the hole, and then made the play. Hits it at the 30. Bell is back. Fields it at the 29-yard line. Jitterbug and down there at the 32-yard line. Darren Perry getting down with coverage. Held him to a three-yard return. So when you come back, it'll be Major Harris time again. Well, Major Harris may remind you of the next Randall Cunningham, but folks, football is not even his favorite game. Yeah, you know, that, growing up, that was my first love, basketball. That's all we played where I'm from, you know, is basketball. You know, I didn't start playing football until high school. So, you know, basketball is my first love, and, you know, if I, if I had a chance, I would probably want to play basketball. He took Brasher High School of Pittsburgh into the state championship against Carlisle. Carlisle was loaded. Jeff Lebo of the Tar Heels and the Owens brothers, one a football player, the other a, an emerging basketball star at Syracuse. Major ran a great floor game, but they lost to Mighty Carlisle. And now in the backfield, Aaron Evans and Andre Johnson for the major. He hands off to Andre, and Johnson comes across to the 36-yard line. Every quarterback I know always wants to be a basketball player. You ever notice that? We all want to be the point guard of the basketball team. Andre Johnson's a guy, although he's the backup tailback, he is a very unselfish player. He's rushed for over 100 yards their last two games. Never seemed to complain. When he gets his chance, he plays very well. Now on second down, the major rolling to buy some time. Incomplete. Sent his fullback out. That's Aaron Evans there. The young second-year player out of Richmond, Virginia, with a penalty flag down at the 39-yard line. Against the defense. Penn State hurt by that personal foul call. Brent, one of the reasons I think Major Harris is so good that it, is that he treats football as it should be. It's only a game to him, and he still has fun playing the game of football. And I think that becomes harder and harder in big-time college football. But he plays with a smile on his face. So the penalty moves.
moves the ball across midfield and into Nittany Lion territory. First and ten for West Virginia. The Mountaineers lead the Nittany Lions 17 to nothing. Nine and a half minutes to go in the first half. Major off a of play fake. Look at the time. Look at the arm. Going long for Phillips. He's got it. Touchdown, West Virginia. Virginia, UCLA with some early difficulty, Notre Dame rolling today, Wyoming with a big lead, and Arkansas, the strength of the Southwest Conference, but Arkansas still must go to the Orange Bowl to play the Hurricanes of Miami. I'll tell you a great game, I'll tell you a dandy. Miami and West Virginia or Notre Dame and West Virginia, take your pick. And speaking to the Bulls, Parsegan coming along at halftime to talk to our Jim Nance. Now, there's a personal foul against West Virginia. They hammered Brown a little bit too hard on that kickoff return on that far side. The ball is brought out to the 44, and let's see how the freshman soccer does now. Penn State badly in need of a score. Gash still in at fullback. Incomplete, overthrew his tight end that time. David Jacob coming out of the backfield. Brent, you mentioned it, and Brent and uh, Era and Jimmy Nance are going to talk about it at halftime. I think this is a fun time of the college season when we can really get into the bowl, start talking about them. You know, can a West Virginia team win a national championship, go undefeated? Remember 1984, BYU won a championship. Everybody said they couldn't. Second and ten. The draw play with Thompson. Midfield, first down. Inside the 40, down to the 35-yard line. Chris Perry, number 49, bringing him down for the Mountaineers, a 16-yard gain. Ball went out of bounds. You may have saw the ball come free, but because it went out of bounds, no fumble in that situation, and they'll have the first down, and Thompson goes over to talk to Joe. said, now look, hold on to the ball. You got a great run. You coughed it up once last week. Now just hold it for me, number 44. Gary Brown replaces it. Time left in the first half. Simpson, the burner in motion. They run Brown. Battles his way to the 33-yard line with 
Daryl Whitmore, number 11, a bright young defensive back, tripping him up. Now Penn State has really had a four-week decline in the rushing attack. There's, you see, Alabama a week ago, 71 yards. And right now, if they're going to have any chance of keeping this game close, 39, 53 yards today, they need a score here before halftime. They need a touchdown. Second and short for the Nittany Lions. Here's the toss to Brown. And he battles his way to the 29. Could be a first down. Let's see where they spot the ball. Williamsport, Pennsylvania. 5'11", 209 running back. He's been the guy that's really come up with all the big plays for Penn State this season, both uh, in the rushing attack and as a receiver. A very good screen receiver out of the backfield. Our first and ten for the Nittany Lions. Ball inside West Virginia's 30, challenging again. Saka throws complete inside the 15-yard line. And that was Michael Timpson catching his first pass, 17 yards, and Alvold Mays, the defensive back. And Joe Paterno said before the game that some of the other guys, the wide receivers, have to come up with big plays. Timpson, right here, runs the out and up against the double zone defense. It's a well-thrown ball by Saka because he is pretty well covered by number three, Mays. Good adjustment by Timpson. The deepest penetration by the Nittany Lions. A first and ten against West Virginia. Saka to Brown. Brown tries to swing away to the outside, and he couldn't. He's down at the 14. Scott Summits, number 73, getting across for that round here. Scott Summits. You know, because you hear so much about West Virginia's offense, you don't think about much of their defense. 73 in the middle of the screen summits. It's the second big play he has made. Just fights off the block of the All-American with Snooski and makes the play. Number 11, Daryl Whitmore just limped off for West Virginia. Number 42, Zippy Shearer is in. And Penn State will throw it right away over the middle, complete inside the 10. The tight end battles his way to the three-yard line. David Jacob being brought down by Drumgoole. You have a quarterback who's off to a slow start. You try to get the ball to the tight end because he's a big target. It's an easy throw. He's right in front of you. So far, Ty Zach has thrown the ball to a chance. It sounded like Turner just said, run the option here. Something we haven't seen much from Saka is they bring the chains out to measure right now to see if Paterno and the Nittany Lions have a first and ten inside that five-yard line. And they have not scored much. One touchdown in the last ten quarters. They're bringing in three tight ends. It's 11 quarters, adding the first one here today. down desperately here with seven minutes left in the half. Well, they get a little bit of a break being just short. Get themselves an extra down now. Third and inches. Thompson is the tailback. Gash the fullback. Young is in there along with Wolf. Three tight ends. Tight formation for the Lions. Gash, the short yardage man, bounces off and toward the end zone for a touchdown. The Nittany Lions have scored with seven minutes to go in the first half. And that's a great run by Sam Gash. Yeah, it wasn't 50 yards, but that was all determination by Gash. Remarkable to me that he's even playing. It looks like Penn State is going to go for two points here. Saka has stayed in for the game. It's Fran Gander, the offensive coordinator. They're looking for two here as they move the ball to the left hash. Saka bending into the huddle. They'll have Daniels and Smith wide to the right. Gash the running back. Thompson is over there on a the wing coming in motion. Three receivers on the right. Saka was looking back, now being chased. Throws complete. 
late for the two, and he hit David Daniels, the sophomore from Sarasota, Florida, and now it is 24 to 8 after the two-point conversion by Penn State. Paterno makes it a 16-point game, but first take a look at the touchdown. Again, it wasn't a long run, but a tough run by Gash, who two weeks ago they thought he had a broken ankle. It was just a strain. He came back and he showed great determination right there. The two-point play here, what Penn State was trying to do was get the man in motion in the flat quickly. West Virginia played a zone defense, took that away, and Saka showed some patience and then found David Daniels, number 26, right underneath the goalpost. It's a good play by Daniels. The key man for the Nittany Lions, sophomore fullback Sam Gash of Hendersonville, North Carolina. His fifth touchdown of the season. He was injured and missed the Alabama game. Now he is back, and Henry Atkins has the ball on the tee for the Nittany Lions. And if you're wondering why Joe went for two there, and he's thinking way ahead now, they're down by 16. He's thinking second half, he needs two touchdowns and a field goal if he can shut them out in the second half. Remember last year, West Virginia had this team beat, and Penn State rallied. Brown scored the winning touchdown. Marker is down at the 28-yard line. Let's see if it was a late clip. Yes, it was. Now West Virginia beginning to make a few of those mistakes that can add up. Will be taken back inside the 15-yard line. Flipping, flipping, receiving team, half the distance to the goal, first down. A first and ten for West Virginia, coming out from their own 13-yard line. They lead it 24 to eight. 6:50 to go in the first half. Evans and Johnson are the running backs for Harris. Moss is the tight end. Johnson swinging wide to the right, and he's taken out of bounds by Neil Hamilton, who's played a superb game. Let's check in with Jim Nance. Jim? Well, quarterback Steve Walsh of Miami moves past Bernie Kosar into second on the Hurricanes' career touchdown pass list. With his 41st, it goes to Andre Brown, puts the Canes 17 up on East Carolina with nine minutes left. Back to Brent. All right, Jim, the Hurricanes are rolling, and here, West Virginia leading Penn State 24-8. John Dockery and Pat Hayden, I'm Brent Musburger. Major Harris has put on a spectacular show in the first half. Here he hands off to Johnson. Great fake that time. And he explodes for the first down before Hamilton can tackle him at the 25. Andra Johnson has great speed, but he can be deceiving because he doesn't have a whole lot of moves, and sometimes he appears slower than he is, and he can really fool a defense. Now left, he, left tackle, Brent, as you see right here, watch him come down and clear the way. The fullback is offset, and this is a little change of pace. They've always run to that fullback until today. Now Harris, running off of that option, spins free from a tackler, throws complete to Rimbert, who's out of bounds. At the 41-yard line, Rimbert, the junior college transfer, catches another one for 17 yards and a first and 10. And another athletic play by Major Harris, finding Reggie Rimbert. This receiver is 6'6". He looks a little bit like a one-iron. He is so tall, he's 6'6", 200 pounds. But Major Harris finds the guy. He is a lean guy. Could you handle a one-iron like that? Heck no, heck no. And Harris handle a seven-iron. First and ten for the Mountaineers. And here's Johnson pounding his way to the 47-yard line before Gianetti brings him down, downstairs to John Dockery. Doc. Brent, let me ask you a question. What happens when a coach gets his program going well and people are excited about it? Well, they name an ice cream after him. Remember last year it was Paterno Peach? Well, this year here in Morgantown, it's Nifty Neeland Fudgeberry. Kind of a strawberry with a chocolate swirl. 
bad. And I might add that uh, Nifty Nealon is out selling uh, Paternal Peach by a wide margin with all <laughs> proceeds going to Ronald McDonald House. Now back to you, Brent. All right. Harris trying to buy time, and that time he could not get it off as the defense collapsed around him. Quintus McDonald, 92, and Dave Zott, the nose man, 79, helped bring him down. Again, another one of these key third downs for the Penn State defense. Again, what they need to do is stuff West Virginia now, give their offense a chance. They scored their first touchdown in a long time. They've got some momentum, but get the ball back. Jamie Lamont, number 15, in at wide receiver, going to the left. Phillips and Rimbert to the right. On third and seven, look at the time the Majors got. Can't find an open man. Now goes to Phillips, complete. Inside the 15-yard line. You know, Brett, it is remarkable to me how accurate Major Harris is with a deep pass. A lot of guys can complete 60% of their passes when they're dinking the ball, but he is completing 60% of his passes, throwing the ball downfield. Phillips is well covered. It's a frozen rope. He has done that twice to Phillips this afternoon. Almost 200 yards in the air already here this afternoon. Two touchdowns. He's run for a third. They've added a field goal. They lead Penn State 20-48. They're threatening again. Evans in front of Johnson in the backfield. This is Johnson right up the middle. Breaks free and gets inside the 10. Collins had him wrapped up, couldn't bring him down, and range finally called the tough running back down. You know, from tackle to tackle, I think Undra Johnson is as strong as any running back I have seen this year in college football. And very much an unselfish guy. Very talented player, plays second team, but never complains. Second down for the Mountaineers and already short. That option, Major turns it up, and he's down at the six with Andre Collins tackling the quarterback, number 31. Major Harris is one of the few option quarterbacks I have seen with an accurate right arm. When you think about option quarterbacks, you think about the Oklahoma guys in particular, great runners, but don't have the touch with the ball because they take such a beating. Harris is able to take that beating and still have touch on the football. Making him perhaps the most dangerous quarterback in the land today. What do you do now with third and short going in? How do you set the defense? He hands it off to Johnson, and he's got a first down inside the five. Scott Gobb, 63, tackling him for Paterno. And a lot of passing teams can't get the short yardage, but this team can because of that offensive line. Don Nealon has done a great job of recruiting these players. Not highly sought, most of them, by some of the major schools. They have to go to the, get, get the second-tier players, but he has done that. He gets them here, and then he coaches them awfully well. First and goal for the Mountaineers. Johnson with a penalty flag down, getting close to the end zone. The linesman throwing the penalty flag on the far side. Brought in a third fullback that time, Rico Tyler, who went in motion. But they call the offsides against Penn State. unusual to see a team like West Virginia who can give you some finesse and then hammer the ball down your throat. Twenty-four to eight, West Virginia leading Penn State. Inside of three minutes here in the first half. It'll be a first down for the Mountaineers at that two-yard line. Tyler, the third fullback, stays in the game. Over the top is Taylor. Break Taylor for a Mountaineer touchdown.
Bauman. Bauman to attempt the extra point. And after so many years of frustration at the hands of the Nittany Lions, West Virginia has opened up a 31 to 8 lead in the first half. How bad has it been since 1956? Penn State has won 30 of 32 games and tied one other. And Brent, most fullbacks can't leap like Dwight Stone, but Craig Taylor can. He got up and over 215 pounds, a great blocker, but there he showed you how he can get up and over. The offensive line did a nice job allowing him to do that. offense here this afternoon. I am surprised. I know West Virginia was averaging 43 points coming into today's game, but awfully surprised. That is the backup quarterback, Greg Jones. He transferred here from Miami. He is a backup with professional potential, and the way things are going, some of the scouts here this afternoon will get a chance to see that arm before this one's over. He backed up Vinny Testaverde at Miami and transferred here over a year ago. Big time arm. Gary Brown and O.J. McDuffie are back for Bauman's kickoff. Let's it go out of bounds. It'll be a five-yard penalty against West Virginia. So tomorrow, the NFL today at 12.30 Eastern. Come along with Dick Butkus, Irv Cross, and Will McDonough. Then the Bears will be at New England. And how about this one? What a big one that is in the NFC West. Phoenix at Dallas. Atlanta at Philadelphia. Those are our early games along with Green Bay at Buffalo. The Packers lost a heartbreaker. Then late, there's the five-star doubleheader game. The Vikings and the 49ers. Ram New Orleans game that came up there a second time. I want to make sure it is early. That game is an early starting game tomorrow. It's a game I'm looking forward to watching in Los Angeles. Those Rams are off to a great start. And New Orleans winning ugly, but they're still winning. And we'll look at Craig Hayward at 12.30 Eastern time. Those of you in, in the East remember old Ironhead and his exploits up in Pittsburgh as the ball blows off the tee. He was one of the real fun guys in college football a year ago. Had a big run a week ago. It was 73 yards. Dick Butkus went down to New Orleans, Pat. He was going to do Bourbon Street with Ironhead. Coach Jim Mora found out and said, no way, no way. <laughs> <laughs> you get him and settle that young man down. There's Bauman kicking it high. Brown at the 9, 15, 20, out to the 27-yard line. Steve Grant, number four from Miami, bringing him down. We should talk about the recruiting base for this West Virginia team. Like a lot of schools, they go into New Jersey and Pennsylvania and Ohio for a lot of their linemen. But when they want running backs and wide receivers, they go down to the state of Florida. How many skilled athletes does Florida turn out every year? It is unbelievable. Sean Redman and Gary Brown are into the backfield for Penn State. This is Brown. 35. 47, a first down for the Nittany Lions, and Daryl Whitmore who returned, bringing him down. Still plenty of time for Penn State with 2.34 remaining in the half. They have three timeouts remaining to get on the board with another touchdown. Around the tailback, Saka throwing over the middle and intercepted at midfield by Whitmore. Whitmore driven out of bounds on the far side. Free safety, read the quarterback's eyes the whole way. Watch him looking right at the quarterback. Sees the tight end coming across, then makes the play. This guy is a very physical free safety. He makes a nice interception there. Now, 
Whitmore has a bright future. They talk about him in the same breath with Deion Sanders of Florida State. No, no, he's not there yet, but they talk about his potential. Now a first and 10 for the Mountaineers, just inside the 30-yard line. Here is Harris swinging it to Johnson. Johnson inside the 20, and he's out of bounds at the 12-yard line. A lot of quarterbacks with shot arms can't throw the ball with touch, but that time Major Harris just lofted the ball right there for under Johnson to run under. A nice touch by Major Harris on that throw. Are they going to get another one before the intermission? 31 to 8. 2.15 to go for Neyland's Mountaineers. The entire state of West Virginia loving this one. Johnson blasts his way inside the 10. Scott Gobb bringing him down. Joe Paterno concerned about his young team. 25 freshmen on this team. And still ahead of Paterno. Maryland, Pittsburgh, Notre Dame. That's in one half, 364 yards in one half by West Virginia. Second and seven for the Mountaineers. Harris options down the line. Johnson fumbles, picks up, and he gets to the seven-yard line. Brian Chismar, number 28, wrapping him up. And that's another reason Don Neelan likes this turf, because you get a good bounce on it. That ball on grass might have gone anywhere, but it bounced right up to Andre Johnson. Chismar is down on the far side. He came into the game injured, and he is shaken up again on this play. He has played very well for Joe Paterno this year at strong safety. They play him at linebacker some, too. Injured during the week. Freak injury in practice. And Chismar will leave the game. While there's timeout, we'll take a break and be right back. Chismar shaken up. He has left the game. This is the second offensive line on the field for the Mountaineers for this drive with the exception of their center, Kokut. Have Redwine, Wolfley, Parker, Lynn out there. Dale Wolfley. The brother of Ron Wolfley, who played fullback here years ago, the last time, as a matter of fact, that West Virginia beat Penn State. Harris to throw it, as all day. Waits, throws back, incomplete. Keith Wynn is tied in, was the intended receiver, but Harris widely, wisely got it out of bounds. Jim Nance and Arrow will come along and they'll talk about the bowl invitation dilemmas. Yeah, which one can coax West Virginia to come? Arrow Parsegan will give us any information about what Notre Dame is thinking. He knows. <laughs> will he tell us, though? I don't know. <laughs> come on, Arrow, step up today. Bauman it through another field goal 24 yarder by Bauman 34 to 8 a minute to go in the first half how the balance of power is shifting in the east a year ago it was Syracuse exploding in Penn State's face now it's West Virginia and at the conclusion of the CBS Sports College football broadcast we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school when you're talking about power in the east I think people around the country particularly out west where I live don't realize the quality of football out there when they see Penn State down they think the entire east is down but Syracuse is up. Rutgers has had a pretty good year, and West Virginia is having a sensational year. Don't forget the cadets of West Point. You're absolutely right. I think they're, what, 6-1 and one now? We'll see them later in the year. That great game in Philadelphia. Army, Navy, one we always look forward to. Bauman now putting the ball down on the tee. Duffy and Brown, the deep men for the Nittany Lions. Brown lets it bounce, fields it on the one-yard line. In trouble. And down at the 16-yard line. 
Let's go downstairs to John Dockery. Doc. Brian, they're, uh, um, Brent, they're wrapping Brian Chismar's knee behind me over here. The irony of it is, in the first quarter, he took off his knee brace because he was limited by it and he wasn't feeling good about it, so he took it off, and then what happens? Someone rolls over on his right knee, and right now you can see them wrapping it in ice. One of the game's ironies. Now back to you, Brent. All right, John, and Sean Redmond, 22, is the fullback. Gary Brown, 27, the tailback, behind the Penn State offensive line. 54 seconds to go for Tony Saka, the freshman quarterback from New Jersey. It's been a very rough education for Saka. This is Brown, down at the 17-yard line. And Penn State, really that clock run down. West Virginia has two timeouts remaining. And they're, again, they run the no-huddle offense, but they have to throw the ball downfield and hope for a big play, give Timpson a chance. Incomplete one to drop it off for Brown. It threw it out of bounds, stopping the clock with 31 seconds. One thing you do not want to do right here is stop that clock very often. You don't want to give the major a last-second opportunity the way he can fire it. Beautiful place, this Morgantown. I've really enjoyed my week here. The people have been awfully nice to us. Great college town. Third down. 31 seconds to go. Brown is down at the 21. Well, Brent, this is a tough situation for any quarterback, but particularly for an 18-year-old freshman like Tony Sack is in. That's two weeks in a row as West Virginia calls a timeout. They have one remaining. But a very tough situation for Saka. Mountaineers use a timeout with 20 seconds to go. They're going to force a punt. They're going to get a return. And who knows what after that. Grantis Bell. And Daryl Whitmore, number 11, has blocked two punts this year. He'll be coming off the corner. He'll be at the bottom of your screen on the short side, number 11. He'll be the wide man. Helkowski to punt it. Gets it off. Fair catch. At the 45-yard line, 13 seconds for Major Harris and the wide receivers. Neyland with some final words for Harris before he comes out. And remember, West Virginia is not afraid, as we've seen in this first half, to throw the ball downfield. They figure they're going to throw the ball downfield six or ten times a game. If they don't catch it, they're hoping for the pass interference. Phillips and Bell are the wide men. Let's see what Neyland wants to do here with Bell coming in motion. They hand it off, and Johnson explodes. 30, 25, 20, 10, touchdown West Virginia!
this is a nice call by Mike Jacobs, the offensive coordinator. Everybody in the house, myself included, thought it was going to be a pass to the right side. But they run the draw back to the left side. Andra Johnson has a terrific burst. He picked up a nice block by his right guard, Bob Kovac, and then outruns the Penn State defense into the end zone. The senior from Fort Lauderdale takes it the distance. And against Penn State's defense, West Virginia's offense has totaled 421 yards. That's in the first half. You know, this is remarkable to me. Everybody wondered about West Virginia because of their schedule. Yes, Penn State is down, but they still have a pretty good defensive team. I am amazed that they score 41 points the first half. Penn State did not let Alabama score a touchdown. Looks good right now. 41 to 8 and three seconds to go. Looks like an Oklahoma score. Squirts it on the ground as the final seconds tick away. First half, listen to this crowd. The stage was set early in the game. West Virginia's first drive. And the major made like a general. Cut back and did it all alone. A 27-yard touchdown run. It was 7-0, and now it's 41-8. Jim Nance and Eric Parsegan will come along after this message and a word from your local station.